houses to the wealthy. And then with the depression and everything, that, that fell apart. And those buildings became rooming houses, boarding houses, and they were just cut into little pieces. And those Europeans made plenty of money off the blood and sweat of black people. Do you want to give me some background biography? Oh, sure. Where were you born? Where, who were your parents? Right here. I was born in Chapel Hill. Really? 85 years ago. <laughs> and my mother had the good sense early on to take me away from the South because she knew with my big mouth and I wasn't afraid of anything, I was going to end up getting lynched. And so she took me to Springfield, Massachusetts, to a designated black ghetto. Oh boy. <laughs> I learned there that somebody had to do something to improve the lots of poor people, especially black and brown people. And so at the age of 10, I started thinking, now what can I do? And for the last 70 years, I've been doing the same thing. Wherever I land, and I have selectively gone to communities where there is a smell of gentrification. And I've moved to some of these places, like moving back to Chapel Hill, like going back to Washington, D.C. I've also had the opportunity to fly to Africa and see how gentrification has played out. For example, the Gambia. I was at, I was at Carolina when I went to the Gambia. And it so happens that Europeans loved to go to the Gambia during those months when they wanted to tan themselves and one, one five-star hotel, I think it was the Holiday Inn, built, they first bought some land on the beaches of the Gambia and don't you know, they disallowed the Gambians to play soccer. The, the Gambians liked to run, go down to the beach to play kickball. They were disallowed to go in the vicinity of the Holiday Inn, quite a different, quite a distance from the Holiday Inn, because a lot of those European women were <laughs> topless. <laughs> and so, <laughs> That's the way it was. Mm -hmm. Kicked off their own beaches. Now that's something. Yep. And in northern Nigeria, not far from Ibadan, there's a place called Little America. And what you have is a bunch of affluent Nigerians who get their money in lots of different ways. But lower income Nigerians cannot live in Little America. And it's a takeoff on, you know, upscale housing and, and so on and so on. So I've had a chance in Nigeria, in the Gambia, in uh, a little bit, Cameroon, Cameroon, and Senegal. All of these places I've had a chance to visit and to examine any footprints of gentrification.
And going back to your mother, what did she do? I mean, did she did she also have a job? My or? mother was an avid reader, and she had wanted to be a school teacher. My grandmother was from the old school, and she wanted my mama to work in some white folks' kitchen, clean their houses, and so on. And my mother said she would never do it. Now, at the time that this happened, there were three kids my mother had, and she put us on Churway bus, and we went to Springfield because we had an uncle up there who was a butler in some rich folks' place, and he thought my mother would make a good maid, but my mother had vowed never ever to do that kind of work. So she got a job working at Springfield Armory, which was making all sorts of things for the Second World War. And she was a good reader, uh, had excellent dexterity, and one of the white fellows at this place, the Armory, wanted her job because she was making more than he, but the manager allowed her to stay in her job. My mother was a feisty little something. Mm -hmm. I tell you might mention your experience of going up there and in the school situation and your mother being an advocate because they put you in a special class. Yeah, that, that when I went up there, the schools were integrated all right. A lot of the kids were from Europe. Not all that good with English. And I had just come from a segregated school down here. And which, I was which making school, Which school did you go to here? <laughs> now, why are you asked what school? I'm just curious. Yeah, no, okay. The Orange County Training School. What does that say to you? That you were a feisty kid. <laughs> no, 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 you got the wrong meaning. Oh, okay. That is what was called school for black kids. K, uh, not K. You learned First crafts and how to cook. Yeah, that, that was the intent, but they also taught you to read and write and do arithmetic. And I, I received the highest grade you could get in this school, and when my mother took me up north, I'm thinking, I'm a smart kid, and the principal asked me where I'd go in school, and I said, Orange County Trade School. They put me in a class for mentally retarded students. Well, I'm a feisty guy, too. Mm -hmm. And what I started to do, I was big for my age. I started beating up those little white foreign boys, <laughs> and they put me in a before putting me in, in the regular classes, they gave me, you know, psychometric exams, check my cognitive abilities and so on. And they had me see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist told them, there's nothing wrong with this boy's brain, he's just an angry kid. And I went all the way through that school system, made the honor roll all the while, and got a scholarship to Brown, having been labeled as a mentally retarded kid. <laughs> so was the Orange County Training School for elementary school? It was from first grade to the twelfth grade. And it was in Chapel Hill? For black kids. And it was in Chapel Hill? In Chapel Hill. And right now it is called Northside Elementary. The same building. Well, it's a new building now. Huh? It's a new building, but the same place. Well, no, no, that building is they destroyed. still part of uh, Northside Elementary. It has much, you're right, a lot of new construction, but they did not tear down Orange County oh, Training okay. School. Right, they just don't have classes. But the name, Training School, was a very common one in the South, and it basically it was school for black kids. 
And this would have been in the 1940s that you were in yes, school here? Yes, that's right, right, 1940s. And that was true in Kentucky, other states in the South, training school. Did, did, did you go to a training school? Of course I did. Did you really? I, I, you never told me that. Yeah, I went to Rosenwald too. Oh, went to Rosenwald? Yeah, I went to three Rosenwalls in my life. Julius Rosenwald, founder of Sears Roebuck, was a good friend of Booker T. Oh, Washington. I'm trying to think of. And, and Rosenwald asked Booker T. what would be best contribution. He said, build schools for rural communities. And they came up with a formula where, I don't know, maybe they had 10 models. And I remember the schools were situated so that when the sun was rising in the east, it hit the window so that all the classrooms would get light from the eastern sun and the <laughs> setting sun. Uh, and, and these schools were built all over the place. There, there's probably some still standing. There are some. You know. I know there's one in, in Durham, and there in North Carolina, there were, as I recollect, 700 of these schools. Yeah. It was Julius Rosenwald. Before that, you might be going to school in a shack they pulled up from a plantation. Or a in church. In a church. Yeah. yeah. Jackie and I were trying to think of the names of those schools. That's right. We a couldn't couple think of weeks ago. Yeah. So we didn't mention that we could not remember it. How about that? Mm -hmm. So, Ted, what high school did you attend in, in uh, Smithfield? In Springfield. In Springfield. Excuse yeah. me. Springfield. Classical High. That was the high school where about 70% of the students happened to be Jewish. Folks came from Long Meadow, because Long Meadow was, well, essentially a oh. suburban community for oh. Jews. Hey, that's really. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's where my son lived when he was <laughs> in Springfield. Place. Is that right? Beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful community. Oh, oh is, is it, it ever? ever. And it, I, it's got a wooded area right yeah. through the center of the town. Oh, my goodness. The sidewalks are about as wide as this room, wow. just the regular sidewalks going to school. <laughs> Long Meadow. Yeah. Long Meadow, that's what it was. And again, these kids went to classical because they were all interested in going to Ivy League schools. Yeah. And you, if you go to classical, you've got a good possibility of getting in. I, I didn't know that. I just know that when we were in junior high school, they separated the kids graduating from ninth grade to send those who are academically gifted to classical, those who are interested in technical stuff, they sent them to technical school, and then people who were interested in using typewriters, they sent them to Commerce High School. And then finally, there was a trade school. And that is where who went? <laughs> Moved the house. Well, we had all those schools in Boston, sir. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. all of the big. Right. Education. Yeah, education we had Latin schools. Boston Latin was one of the finest, though. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And then when you went to Brown, you were one of five black students. Oh? Five out of 5,000. And that was 1950? I went from 53 to 57. Five black students. Five black students out of 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> and by my first day at Brown, some boy came up to me and said, uh, are you on the football team or the basketball team? <laughs> I told him to get, I was not, I'm not a nice guy, get the F out of my face before I knocked him on it. And he left. <laughs> then I had a full scholarship, but 
you know, that didn't take care of the, of everything. And I remember getting a job. I, I never had consumed alcohol at all, but I went to a fraternity and asked them to hire me as their liquor bartender. And I had to learn how to do that. I remember going to my job one night and this gal, happened to be Jewish, came over to me and she grabbed my hand and held it and she started crying. And what in the world is she crying about? She probably thought that I was not a student at Brown, but I was, that's what, how I made my living. At the time that she did that, I was on the dean's list. <laughs> Why was she crying? Why was she crying? Because, now,